Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the latest in our series of Doha debates coming to you from the Gulf state of Qatar and sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. Shock, anger, disbelief, just some of the emotions provoked by the release of classified American cables by the famous and infamous whistleblower's website, WikiLeaks. In the US, Sarah Palin wants to see the group's founder hunted down. Others would like him charged with whatever they can make stick in a court of law. Their claim that diplomacy needs its secrets kept, otherwise it'll simply grind to a halt with everyone the loser. To its many fans, though, WikiLeaks has struck a blow in favor of the citizen's right to information. Spied on for years by his government, he finally gets to turn the tables and see what the leaders themselves have been up to. What do you think? Well, our motion tonight, this House believes that the world is better off with WikiLeaks, and it'll be hotly contested. Speaking for the motion, Sir Richard Dalton, an associate fellow at the Royal Institute of International Affairs in London, and a former British ambassador to Iran. And with him, Khan Ross, once a high-flying British diplomat who quit after the Iraq war. He founded and now runs an organization called Independent Diplomat, the world's first non-profit diplomatic advisory group. Well, speaking against the motion, Carl Ford, who headed the State Department's Bureau of Intelligence and Research, a former military analyst for the CIA on China, and now adjunct professor at Georgetown University's School of Foreign Service. He's joined by Scott Gilmore, who founded the humanitarian group Peace Dividend Trust, and had a variety of sensitive postings while working for the Canadian Foreign Service, notably in Indonesia during the collapse of the Suharto government. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. And now let me, first of all, ask Sir Richard Dalton, please, to speak for the motion. Thank you. Governments work for us as citizens. The world is better off with WikiLeaks because it has told the truth. It has exposed wrongdoing as over the deaths of civilians in Iraq and Afghanistan. It has given citizens new facts with which to inform public debate. So it has strengthened the ability of citizens to require governments to justify and explain their actions. Accountability is essential, not just because we want a government that does not abuse its power, but also because we want governments to take wise decisions. Yes, accountability and truth are essential for making good policies and taking sensible action. And Julian Assange of WikiLeaks is right that transparency tends to produce just government. Usually, we can trust our governments, but not always. They can turn their propaganda on their own people. They can manipulate the media. Parliaments can be weak. Freedom of information legislation can also be insufficient. Businesses can be corrupt. WikiLeaks are publishers and journalists when so much of decisive importance to citizens is being distorted or concealed by the authorities, good journalism is vital. WikiLeaks should not conspire to steal confidential information. I do not condone that. But if given it, they are free, as newspapers are, to reproduce it. It should, of course, edit material to reduce harms as it has done. The case against them has been enormously exaggerated. They didn't steal the cables. They are not terrorists. They have not wrecked any country's vital interests. Would you come to a close? The State Department of the US says that little lasting damage has been done to US interests. So I urge you to support this motion. It is to support all people's right to freedom of information, expression, and to truth. Sir Richard Dalton, thank you very much indeed. You'd have been hounded out of the Foreign Office for expressing those views, wouldn't you? Out on your ear in about five minutes. And if you'd still been in your position as ambassador in Tehran, you wouldn't be espousing those views either, would you? Um, well, I always wanted, when ambassador, to write in such a way that I would justify what I was saying to my government if they challenged me with it. But what about and your sources? What about those little at asides at dinner parties and that valuable little meeting in a market where somebody slips you a bit of confidential information? 
would you have got that if, if your cables had been open well, one for of the everybody things, to see? One of the, goods, you wouldn't, would you? one of the goods which will come out of this episode is that the United States will get, take much greater care of the confidences given to it by its informants. It failed or, at the level or, or of all those confidences personal won't be forthcoming. management, all those or confidences at the level won't of be design of systems, and at the level of motivating its own staff. So it's time that there was some accountability for the mistakes made in the State Department and the Defense Department. Yes, but let me just take you back to your days in Iran. Somebody's going to slip you a piece of very confidential information. And they think it might get on WikiLeaks, there's a chance. They're not going to bother, are they? They're not going to risk their life for something that you can't hold on to well, anymore. Well, you can hold on to it. And the fact is but you don't. that you, don't. you do hold on to it. We've not seen the secrets that are real secrets of the United States government. Those Yet. series of telegrams which contain the real hard stuff have not been put into the public domain. It's only a matter of time, and it's isn't a it? Ma it's a matter of trust. It's a matter of the ambassador, in my case, being able to assure the informant that, yes, we take proper care of the confidences given to us. And that will still be possible in future. You said you want accountability. You want accountability from governments. What about accountability from WikiLeaks? Who are they accountable to? They're, they're, they're accountable to the court of public opinion, and if they break laws, then they have to be accountable oh, and that's in good law enough. as well. Who, who can hold them to that? What does that actually mean? It sounds good. It doesn't mean anything, does it? Court of public opinion. They can't hold them into a court and get redressed for something they've done. You can't even find them. If they haven't, it's a bit late, isn't If they it? haven't broken any law, why should they be hauled into court? Sir Richard Dalton, it's a question I think the other side will answer. Thank you very much indeed. Could I please ask Carl Ford to speak against the motion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. I came to the debate tonight thinking that most of you would agree that diplomacy is an essential element in international relations and that trust is an important aspect of all diplomatic communications. If for no other reason than the fact that misunderstandings have been a major cause of war and political disputes throughout history. Those who support, support this motion tonight would have you believe that these principles are no longer important. I hope most of you disagree. Julian, of course, says WikiLeaks disruptions are justified because he's helping the American people. Apparently, he believes it's his mission to uncover illegal U.S. government activities. He hasn't shown me any yet, any illegal activities. Maybe he's saving the best for last, I don't know. But certainly, we in the United States are no strangers to misconduct by government officials. But instead of relying on Julian, we have independent inspector generals. We have whist whistleblower laws. We have congressional oversight. We have courts to ensure that our law enforcement and intelligence organizations don't overstep their authorities. In the case of WikiLeaks, however, Julian did far more than speak his mind or express an opinion. He attacked the United States. Well, some of you may agree that the United States deserves attacking and applaud the damage WikiLeaks has done to us. I, of course, disagree on both counts. Thank you. You say that uh, WikiLeaks hasn't uncovered any illegal activity. You appear to have missed the order from the State Department uh, authorizing illegal bugging of offices at the United Nations and the illegal hacking into uh, delicate information belonging to UN officials. Um, that's certainly illegal activity, and the U United States hasn't even contested that fact. Well, I, as far as I'm Isn't concerned... Isn't that helpful to the world's public to know about that? Well, I, I think that uh, uh, if we are bugging the United Nation, and I found out about it, I'd be one of those whistleblowers. Uh, and I've been in intelligence and government for over 40 years. So we're better off knowing about it, thanks, thanks to Wikileaks. Well, whistleblowers are, are, are necessary, and I would be one if I thought that there was some real uh, wrongdoing being done. Isn't it also instructive that we now know that contrary to their assurances that they didn't keep any record of civilian casualties in Iraq, we now know that out of 109,000 uh, casualties, 65,000 belong to non-combatants. That's also something that WikiLeaks has told us. That's worth knowing well, too, isn't it? We know that they did not publicize those casualties. They said they didn't have them. Uh, they knew what they were. They kept close 
So they lied. They no, lied. No, I think that not everybody. So WikiLeaks has caught them in a lie. Not everybody in, in the field knows exactly what, what's going on and what, what's not going on. But they, they, they did know. They said effect. they didn't. Now it transpires they do. It's a straight lie. No. I, I, if you you believe, can't have it both ways. Well, I, you can't I, be a little bit sure. And well, if it were up to me. You're sure you're not sure. I, our young men and women have already experienced so much that they will never recover in our lifetime. And to believe that somehow war is, is not horrible and that bad things don't happen. I'm talking about details. Casualties. I'm talking about details that were lied about. I'm not talking about the horrors of war. We all know war is horrible. It's why so you're not you, supposed to launch so, it. Well, but, I, you, but either you, tell the truth about what you know or, or, or not. Well, they've caught if, them in a lie if, and they've caught them in illegal activity at the United Nations as well. So there are two things that WikiLeaks has brought to the attention of the public that are worth having, aren't they? Well, I, what, what you're saying is that you accept that privacy in diplomatic communications is not important. I don't it's believe only you people that. tell the truth, but they lie a lot, don't no, they? No, no. So I, I, what, no, no. what other chance does the public have that. to get at I, it? You can't get away with that. The fact is you're saying that diplomatic... I'm not getting away with it. They're getting no, away with it. WikiLeaks is getting by, away with it. By your I'm questions, not. you're saying that you don't think diplomatic communications of any country should be private. And that's not. I'm not saying that. I'm not okay, saying that. Well, forward. Thank you very much indeed. All right. Let me now ask, please, Khan Ross to speak for the motion. Um, thanks, Mr. Chairman. You seem to have been doing a pretty good job speaking for the motion uh, for our side of the table <laughs> already. Um, anyway. Uh, well, I don't think Sir Richard Dalton thinks that. There uh, you go. I, I tease. Um, greetings. Uh, if governments told the truth, we would not need WikiLeaks. But unfortunately, because they do not, we do need it. I know this not from academic study or observation. I know this from direct personal experience. I was a British diplomat working on Iraq for several years for the British government. That government did not tell the truth to its own people. It exaggerated the case for war. It ignored available alternatives to war. Parliament failed to scrutinize the government. So did the press. We need something more. The leaked cables reveal a devastating picture of governments saying one thing to each other in secret and quite another to their own publics, particularly here in the Middle East. Presidents lying to their parliaments about US military attacks in their own countries. Intelligence chiefs plotting to destroy opposition groups in their own countries. Almost no decision is better for being formulated or conducted in secret. Before resigning from the British Foreign Office, I worked on some of the most difficult and sensitive issues in foreign policy, Afghanistan, terrorism, and Iraq. And my experience showed me that far too much is kept, is kept secret, covering up both good but also bad. The phenomenon of WikiLeaks will, I hope, make governments think again. Governments should at last realize the necessary truth that what they do in private should match up to what they say in public. And for this pressure, we have to thank not our parliaments, nor our congresses, and nor, Tim, I'm afraid, the press. We have to thank WikiLeaks. Could you come I, to a close, I please? urge you to support the motion. Thank you very much, Khan Ross. Um, what about those people who are damaged by WikiLeaks? Um, what about them? What redress do they have? There's no evidence that anybody has been damaged. I mean, the, this yes, claim there is. is. I mean, Morgan Schwangerai, uh, the embattled Prime Minister of Zimbabwe, is facing an investigation which could uh, result in a full-scale prosecution and a death sentence if he's found guilty. That's pretty it, damaging. It, it, was it? it was already well known that Morgan Schwangerai was plotting against, the, quite correctly, plotting against the Mugabe government, and he's already been tried for it. And the WikiLeaks cables doesn't reveal anything new in that regard. And the Afghanistan, the uh, release of the tribal elders, names of tribal elders, community members who met the United States and NATO forces, well, no, no danger to them at all? There you have a point, I must say. I think uh, WikiLeaks could have done a better job in redacting and editing the information to make you sure that no harm done. could have done a better job. No I mean, this isn't done. a parking offence. These are people's lives we're talking about. I mean, you may say, oh, we could have done a little better here. It's people's lives. I if, think they're, if they're out there to do good, this doesn't do it, does it? I think the obligation to do no harm and to be accountable and to be transparent applies as much as to WikiLeaks as it does to governments. But how I can agree. it apply to a bunch of internet cowboys who put out whatever they feel like it? I think we're just beginning to have this debate. I think this kind of openness is going to be with us from 
from now on, there will be more and more WikiLeaks, there will be more and more disclosures of this kind. It could well go and the I other think, way, couldn't let it? Let me finish. Well I, think we, I think we need to develop a moral code and a set of norms and understandings about how these things should be conducted. So WikiLeaks in its current form you don't like? It's not the be-all and end-all. I end think all. it's imperfect, but it is an, a response to the fact that people have been lied to by their governments for the last 10 years in particular. And it is, a, it is a crude response to that, but a necessary one. And let me put the same question to you I put to, to Sir Richard Dalton. How would you get ever a source, a confidential source, to trust you with information if it could be given out to WikiLeaks and broadcast around the world? They, they simply won't do it. Well, in all candor, and I've written 80,000 words in a book about this very subject, I don't think diplomacy is a very honest business. And it should be more honest and less duplicitous, and it should be more transparent. All right. Karen Ross, thank you very much. Thank you. Could I please ask Scott uh, Gilmore to speak against Absolutely. the motion? I have to say, I was concerned about debating Sir Richard, but now I'm terrified about debating you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I can still confidently say that the world is not a better place because of WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks gained fame by revealing horrible collateral damage in Iraq, but ironically, it's now creating that same collateral damage of its own, hurting innocent people. The recent cable gate dump harms not only U.S. diplomats, but also the thousands of human rights activists and opposition leaders who talk to diplomats. I can say from my own experience that those brave people that are willing to share information with foreign uh, diplomats can put their lives at risk and do die, and people will die because of the, the, the cable uh, releases. But don't take my word for it. Amnesty International called for WikiLeaks to not publish the cables, concerned that it would needlessly harm innocent activists. How did Julian Assange respond to this? He told them to go stuff themselves. Now, WikiLeaks is also going to erode accountability. In the United States and around the world, the law is made by the people and those the people elect. Democratic institutions such as courts and parliaments maintain checks and balances and decide what should or should not be kept secret. WikiLeaks has now taken it on themselves to play this role, to decide what the public can and cannot see. The power to decide what is justifiably secret used to belong to you, the citizens of democratic governments. Assange has taken that from you. Now, note I say democratic governments because WikiLeaks is not revealing the secrets of totalitarian states. Ironically, Assange is seeking to harm those nations which are already the most open and the most transparent. WikiLeaks began as a whistleblowing, a, a whistleblower of terrible wrongs, but now is merely vandalizing diplomacy. The documentary dumps are making it more difficult for ambassadors to do their jobs, to talk confidentially with foreign people and governments, and as a result, the world is less diplomatic and less open. This is because WikiLe WikiLeaks is a symptom, it is not a cure. It is a symptom of the understandable frustration felt around the world by people who are rightly demanding more openness from their governments. But arbitrarily revealing secrets in this unaccountable fashion on this industrial scale is not the cure. It makes the situation worse by forcing governments to record less, share less, and hide better. So let me close with the words of Private Bradley Manning, who gave the US diplomatic cables to WikiLeaks. He said his leak would, and, and I quote, bring worldwide anarchy. It's beautiful and horrifying. Those are not the words of a transparency activist who's seeking to make the world a better place. Could you come to a close? Those are the words of an arsonist. Please oppose this motion. Scott Gilmore, thank you very much indeed. What kind of arsonist is it in the shape of Julian Assange who approaches the US State Department, specifically the US Embassy in London, and offers to um, share the information and get suggestions from them about who might be endangered by this information? They turned him down flat. Well, he's an inconsistent arsonist because he has made that offer and he's retracted that offer. Well, it was a good offer. offer. They, they, they the turned offer him down flat. Pulled it away. They turned him down flat. So who's the responsibility yeah. for damaging life? Where does that lie, with them or well, with I, Julian Assange? He tried. He knocked on the door. They he, turned him away. He tried, and did they turn him away, or was it a negotiating tactic suggesting to him, that, assuming that he had some sort of moral guidance or moral point there, where he recognized that people would be hurt and they were demanding that he would do the right thing? All they said to him in their letter, November 27, 2010, despite your stated desire to protect those lives, you have done the opposite and endangered the lives of countless individuals. They turned him down flat. Instead of taking part in the process. The State Department also doesn't ter uh, negotiate with terrorists. And in a way, this is a form of terrorism. This is terrorism. This is, this is, this is old school anarchy. This is Julian Assange saying uh, How would we have open that he's trying to, to reduce. To give us information about what's been going on in Iraq? You said, you said an interesting thing. You said that information used to lie with the people. Did it? How much information were the people given on Iraq? 
The, the they information were lied to consistently about the presence and, of weapons And do you know what? Before WikiLeaks came out, before WikiLeaks came out, we found out they lied. And in fact, in, in the United Kingdom today or yesterday, Prime Minister uh, Blair was held accountable for that. He was stood before a court, basically, of the people to be held accountable. To be held accountable? He barely answered the questions. Yeah. We had, and, and we had the, the unenviable spectacle of, of the committee that was inquiring yeah. into yeah. Iraq, unable to get access to two letters mm -hmm. between President Bush but and Tony remains, Blair, though, which they quoted from extensively in their memoirs. Everyone at this table and everyone in this Isn't room knew that those lies took place before WikiLeaks did so much damage to the international diplomatic system. We knew that, and those people were being held accountable. We knew it from leaks. Yeah, from we knew it from leaks. We knew it from whistleblowers. If, if this is people, not, if people this don't is not leak, whistleblowing. This if is, WikiLeaks this is doesn't vandalism. leak, what other opportunities have we got? We have a history of governments, people have over the last 10, 15, 20 to years, be lying to their people. Absolutely. But of the 250,000 cables it. that are being... You admit it. I admit that whistleblowers have a moral obligation to stand up to that sort of thing. And Karn did the right thing when he you did sure that. sure you're on the right side but of he, this debate? But he did not let Maybe you should cross a quarter over. million cables go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott Gilmore. Thank you very much indeed. The motion before the House. This House believes the world is better off with WikiLeaks. We're going to take your question. Gentlemen up there. And the blue shirt. Thank you. I have a question from Mr. Ross. Say that the world is, you are supporting the motion and you're saying that the world is better off. But at the same time, you're saying that WikiLeaks should have done a better job in filtering or not saying the whole truth because the truth could might harm some people. I give an example, an, ex an example of Afghanistan because I'm from Afghanistan. WikiLeaks only released the information to just show the relation between Ahmed Karzai and his former vice president, but showed not, no, no proof that. His brother, Ahmed, I mean, Wali, Wali Karzai, he's being corrupted and he's being stealing the money as well. Don't you think that showing half of the truth actually is harming more people than not, having, not knowing the truth at all? I think it's a very good question. I think we need the whole truth and that we need to examine that. One of the problems with WikiLeaks is, is if, of course, it's only a partial account. But the cables from Afghanistan are nevertheless very devastating because they show the Karzai government brazenly refusing to address corruption at the request Karn, of the US what, what government. What are we not seeing? What is Julian Assange not allowing us point. to see? No, I agree. It's a, we, this we, is the we fundamental problem. It's not yeah. a problem. It's the fundamental problem. So you say problem. there should be full transparency. We should see all the cables. No, I'm saying that we should take, in the, in the case of the democratic states of like the United States, those democratic and accountable institutions that we already have in place, those checks and balances, and Scott, use them. it doesn't work. It didn't work in the case of Iraq. I've testified to Congress and I've testified to Parliament, and their questions are not good enough. They don't hold that's, government listen, to account. That's just pure rubbish. Okay, the, why? the fact is why? That that's, your, that's your opinion. It's well, not my I was, opinion, it's my I was involved in this process, and I know that the mistakes were made because people didn't make the right decisions, not because they were trying to lie to people. You can be wrong. The fact is that weapons of mass destruction was simply a mistake by the intelligence community, no, that's and that they no. were only repeating what the intelligence community said. That's a fact. So you may wag your finger at me, but I worked on this subject for four and a half years. I read the intelligence every single day, and the case for war was exaggerated. But, the, but the, the, that's not the point. That's not the point. What is the point then? The point and that, is, that truth was not revealed. It was not found out by parliaments before the but war. Whose fault That's why was we that? need these whose cables out. Whose fault was that? It was the intelligence community in the United mm -hmm. States' fault. And where is the accountability for them? Well, but they did not do a good job, and they should be blamed for that. The fact it's is, it's a that, little late for that, isn't it? Well, it's kind of late for you to say all of this stuff. I was there. And I, I don't resigned remember you speaking up. I resigned. I spoke up. I spoke up about it. too, fellow. <laughs> so well, this is not something that you can be, you know, the, the, the soul of the world. The fact is that there were mistakes made in Iraq. There were things that were done that I think were horrible, the torture, much of the other things that went on. But to argue that the United States government is, can't be trusted, I'm and it's lied to its I argued people. about my own government, well, you listen carefully. I, I have more respect for the British government, apparently, than you do. Uh, the fact is that... This is one of those cases where every government in the world has to honor privacy. If they don't, people won't talk to them. Privacy, That's fact. Privacy over truth? I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's not a matter of truth. If someone tells you something to pass on to the President of the United States and says, but please don't tell anybody, 
That was not the case in WMD. It's, you not, it's not that simple in WMD. There was vast amounts of intelligence data which said very clearly over and over the same thing that there was no threat from That's Iraq. That's not true. That That's intelligence was then massaged you, to claim a threat. I read that intelligence, sir. I was part I, of the I, assessments. I, went I, wrote to, the, I, wrote I wrote the intelligence. I went to UK US meetings on Iraq every quarter for four and a half years. And we began every one of those meetings by saying the same thing. Containment is working. Iraq is not well, a threat. But, but, but the, if, you, if you're right, this doesn't mean that WikiLeaks is going to make the world better. We have a democratic system in place, and as Winston Churchill, your Winston Churchill said, it's a horrible system, but it's the best system we got. The choice that we're being offered here tonight is between choosing a form of anarchy or at least trying to work within the system that's, helped, that's worked pretty well so far and is working in the UK. Okay, we could, we could argue very passionately here at the table for a long time, but I think we want to bring the audience in. <laughs> Gentlemen, in the second row there, you've got a question. Good afternoon. Uh, we the people are the citizens, are the ones who choose our leaders in our countries during voting. If we don't know the, re the, the truth behind our leaders and their plans in the future, then what's the point? Democracy is a mess. It's a messy house. It's a, it's a house with leaky roofs and all sorts of problems and floors that are falling down. And they doesn't leave. have to be full of lies though, does it? Well, some houses are. Mm -hmm. but what we're offered here is a choice. Julian Assange and, and Private Manning and others, they want to blow this house up. They, they genuinely I want to bring down the diplomatic that. system. And what we're proposing on this side of the table is that it's a bad system, but we can make it better. We can rebuild that house. We can use democracy to challenge, like is happening in London right now, the mistakes. Rather than destroy it. He says himself that that's his purpose. He's not trying to have more open and transparency. He's hoping that we tighten up. He hopes that people can't communicate between governments. That's exactly what he wrote. That's what he, his objectives are. And if you agree with those, fine. So but, Richard Dalton, but that's I a want different to bring you issue. In. You're quoting very selectively from what he said, which is why I quoted his very careful words that transparent government tends to produce just government. And I'm sure you would agree with that. But the point is that we have a difficulty facing US diplomats at the moment. We do not have anything like the kind of anarchy or vandalism of the diplomatic system that you are alleging. Why? Because it will be in the interests of all those informants and all those foreign governments to continue to deal with the United States. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Gentleman in the second row, please. I'm Mahmoud, and I was just gonna ask for Mr. Carl and Scott. You were saying that WikiLeaks is a terrorist act. It's not terrorism. Terrorism is for killing innocent people, and it's not a terrorist act to give information out, information that shouldn't be hidden from the public. Carl Ford? I understand completely people's concerns about not being told the truth by their governments. Uh, that's something that all of us object to, and that we should hold our governments to a very high standard. And that's why we elect officials that's why we set up elaborate procedures to oversee what the executive branch and what the president is doing. Uh, does it, is it fail safe? No. Uh, but the intention is to make sure that the information that the people of the United States need to know to make good decisions, they know. If there are things that they w would undermine their national security, we sometimes say it's better that we keep it secret. The American people, by the way, agree with that. They know that if there are some things that could secret, hurt us. If you're trying to keep it secret, you know, like people outside in the US and Canada and Australia, they don't really know what's happening in Palestine. They don't know how, you know, they, don't, they only know one side of the story. They don't know the next. They don't know, you know, the killing of innocent people, you know. You, well, they I, only know one not side true of the, the story. You know, this is what, this is what Licky Leak is trying to do. They're well, just trying to give the other side of the story, which the government's hide. Well, I, I think that the people in the United States hear that story loud and clear from its, not only its government I officials, disagree. but from its, its press and media. The fact is that they may not tell it exactly like you want it to. They may not be as sharp or as accurate as you hope they would be. But the fact is that I'll put the United States and its openness and its transparency up against any country in the world. Scott Gilmore, you wanted to add something. Well, I, you know, I said WikiLeaks is a form of terrorism, and it sounds absurd, doesn't it? It sounds over the top, but think about it. This is a group of people who are trying to change the way that governments 
uh, act and behave, and they're doing it through a set of illegal actions. They're trying to scare people into changing their behavior. And innocent people what are going to be hurt and die by this. Private Manning has stole. He is not a member of WikiLeaks. Say, well, this is a fundamentally yeah, important but distinction. Listen, but, 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 I support the right of WikiLeaks as a journalistic organization to re support, to reproduce materials. Can, don't use it. Don't call them journalists. Can we just let him speak? They, you've, had a, you've had a lot of time. Please. They, to reproduce material they are given. There is no distinction in that respect between the New York Times, Der Spiegel, The Guardian, and WikiLeaks. And guns don't I do kill not, people, people. I do kill not people. condone the stealing of government information by the perpetrator. But as with the Pentagon Papers and other issues, there can be a higher purpose served if indeed other procedures haven't succeeded in writing injustices. I think there's something very important to say to Scott Gilmore and other people who talk about Bradley Manning, assuming that he's the perpetrator of this. We only know one side of the story about his involvement. And in a democracy and a rule of law system, a man is entitled to the presumption of, of innocence b before he's tried. And I think it's very important that we respect that in this case. You're absolutely right, Karin. Absolutely right. I'll take a question from the gentleman in red on the right, please. Uh, my name is Farhan al Swadi. I'm from Qatar. And I would like to ask, uh, uh, just in general, is it really that wrong to know the truth or what is happening in the world today? Diplomacy is not Facebook. Diplomacy requires a certain amount of confidentiality. Well, I mean, so, but, uh, excuse me, so what? I mean, if it's wrong, if it, if it, what, is it wrong to tell the truth? Why, we have to keep things a secret now? Um, sometimes we do, uh, and we do it all in our private lives. Diplomacy involves being frank and fearless. And we all recognize that, that humans, or leaders are humans, and they're going to be upset by that frank and fearless advice if we say it in public. You know, the governments, for example, take China, are going to have a much better chance of getting China to treat its citizens in Tibet better if they engage them privately behind closed doors. If those cables were thrown, and perhaps they already have been, to the wind, then China is simply going to repress and, 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 and uh, work harder and, be, and lose face. Uh, I think there's an assumption here which needs to be tested or at least questioned, which is the assumption that governments need privacy in order to conduct their business. That trust needs to be earned by government. It should not be automatic. And the fact is, over recent years, with the abuses that we've seen, that trust has been lost. And governments need to restore that trust. But it is not something that is automatically given by us, the people. We give governments the right to do what they do in our name. It's not automatic. OK, lady, lady in the third row there. Hi, my name is Nazar Shabdeen. I'm from Pakistan. I'd like to address my question to those speaking for the motion. How do you explain the deaths of a tribal elder in Afghanistan who dies, who is killed because um, his associations with liberal um, parties are revealed because of WikiLeaks? So Richard Dalton. That would be appalling if it happened. My case rests on the fact that the balance of WikiLeaks account is a good one. I do not support everything that they have done. Some things that they have done have been wrong, but overall, Looking at this particular motion, I do believe that the world is better off with WikiLeaks. That doesn't mean to say that some dreadful things will not happen as a result of WikiLeaks. But remember where we started, which was with the statements by both Khan and myself about the significance of the Iraq and Afghanistan war logs in educating our peoples both those who have suffered and those who've inflicted the suffering about the scale of civilian casualties attendant on military operations. Okay, I'm going to take a question from the woman behind. Yes, you, please. I'm from Qatar. You. You've been talking about diplomacy this whole time. And, well, first of all, I'd just like to point out the United States is all about freedom of speech and freedom of press and being truth and truthful, and the people should have the right to speak out and say whatever they want. However, with all the wars that are being fought today, such as the war in Iraq, like you cannot um, possibly say that without WikiLeaks or something that would show the people the truth that these people would not be harmed. I mean, more people are dying because they're not finding out the truth about the reasoning behind these wars that are happening. So you're saying that like, the United States has been spying on UN officials. I think that that's something that the people should deserve to know. Scott Gilmore, you're, you're well, nodding in agreement. I didn't say that. <laughs> and, I, and I think that, uh, that spying uh, is something that espionage uh, is an illegal activity by every country. Every country does it. 
But the State Department is not an intelligence organization. They don't spy. They're not involved in espionage. It was the State they simply Department are cable, though. It was the State Department cable from Washington to the U.S. mission at the U.N. You, were, you worked, what was your title, Director of Intelligence in the State Department. Are you saying you did not know that the U.S. was spying on, on the U.N.? Correct. Well, that's extraordinary. But I, uh, I, I agree with what you're but, saying. Perhaps but, you need WikiLeaks. Yeah. Yeah. Not, at, not, at the cost, not at the cost of the security of the American people. And I, don't, I think, I that don't this think will the security be, of the American people is damaged uh, by the revelation that U.S. diplomats have let, been told to spy Why don't we let Americans decide UN. that? Yeah. Sure, well, we, sure could, we could let Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, who said that the revelations were awkward and embarrassing, but the consequences for U.S. foreign policy he described as fairly modest. I agree. But the problem is, it's the. It's not you're facing No, 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 no. I'm saying that the information itself. Scott Gilmore said it was anarchy. So damaging. You're contradicting the information by your own process that's been impacted. The fact is that people will not share information. People will tighten up their security procedures. They will not be as open. They will not be as transparent. And that's going to hurt everybody. Then why is the State Department saying to Congress that there has been little? long-term damage to U.S. interests, if because, what you're saying is true. Because they're talking about the actual information that was included in the leaks. That information, I think all of us agree, there is not very much there. There's some embarrassing things, but there's certainly uh, not a whole lot of information that people didn't already know. Some of it's interesting. I'm going to go to the next question, the gentleman in the second row there, please. Hi, uh, I'm Khaled, I'm from Qatar. Uh, we must question uh, who are governments protecting from the truth, th uh, themselves, uh, their reputation, or the people. Uh, I would agree that this is uh, for, for their own public reputation. The insidious irony of WikiLeaks is they're not focusing on the governments that do the most lying. They're focusing on the governments and that are the, the most read. open, the most transparent, the most accountable. They're, they're, they're harming not only innocent and people, but powerful. innocent institutions. Well, being wrong is not a lie. Some people make mistakes. They sincerely believe things, but they're wrong. They don't have the right information, or they simply, their, their, their experiences, their cognitive uh, worldview is, is off kilter with people, and they make mistakes. They do bad things. And absolute truth, absolute transparency is, noth is something that nobody in this room actually believes in. You know, I don't like the suit Karn bought today. But I'm not going to tell him that because it's going to hurt his feelings. You just did. <laughs> <laughs> Count Russ, you wanted a quick word on this? I think it's a very interesting design? question. I mean, I think the ultimate ideal is actually transparency. I mean, not of every detail, not of every kind of personal message between people, but actually full transparency would make the world a better place. But would Sir Richard have left um, uh, uh, Iran and, and British-Iranian relations better if on his last day he had sent a package to no, the foreign minister in Tehran with all of his I mean, cables? I think, I think you're making a false case because I think to talk about it in, the, in individual episodes in the current dispensation would un undoubtedly be disruptive and, but and that's perhaps all, that's it, we've been perhaps doing all even that. harmful. But actually, the goal here is a much greater culture of transparency. Clearly, that's my hope that the, of what WikiLeaks will produce and why I support the motion is that it will actually force governments to be more transparent. But it, it'll force they will be vulnerable. And I agree. But I agree with you too that every government should be vulnerable to WikiLeaks. And I think WikiLeaks is in fact the greatest threat to the most repressive governments. Interestingly, in a debate. I took part in the other day, it was a Chinese, Chinese academic who said this, WikiLeaks is the greatest threat to oppressive governments. If and I think WikiLeaks says a worse story WikiLeaks about... WikiLeaks is a theoretical threat Scott, to Chinese finish. governments. Let me finish for a second. WikiLeaks tells a worse story about many of the governments that the US is talking to Absolutely. than it says about the US itself. Okay, I'm going to move on. Lady in the second row. Yes, you. Good evening, everyone. You want to change diplomacies, you want a new system, but you want a new system that will start with something wrong with a leak, with the stolen information, what good base is that? If the United States representatives can assure those contacts that yes, the State Department and the Defense Department are not going to collude to take no care of official secrets in their possession, which is in effect what they did through the extensive Defense Department network, which allegedly Mr. Manning had access to, if the U.S. representatives can assure their contacts that secrets are going to be kept, as they do have to be kept in certain negotiations, for example, then I believe that we will see the WikiLeaks episode with respect to the diplomatic system as a very embarrassing episode rather than as a fundamental change. 
So, yes to more transparency. Yes to citizens being more eager to demand explanations from their governments. Why, for example, has the member states of the GCC adopted such a different position in public to the one they've adopted in private about their relationships with Iran? The citizens of GCC member states should be asking their representatives that. So maybe for the sake of a quiet life, to go back to one speaker, uh, individuals don't want to get involved, but those individuals and those families and those tribes, those communities have representatives, and those representatives are already involved in the public affairs of your country. Is there always going to be a need for WikiLeaks, in your view? I beg your pardon? Is there always going to be a need for WikiLeaks, in your view? Um, WikiLeaks will provide a service, as will other newspapers... To keep governments honest? To look over to their shoulders? To keep governments honest, And yes. who keeps WikiLeaks honest? And this is the fundamental difference. I mean, we were agreeing with your, the, what you're saying, that we need more it's accountability. It's not a fundamental... This is a kind of the comparison that comes up over no, no, and over no, no. again. I mean... Karin, I've been giving you a chance, and you have to let me go uninterrupted like, here. We, we, I agree with you. Yes, let's, we, let's go get my I agree with you that we, that we all want a more open government. We want more accountability. But WikiLeaks is not going to do that for us. WikiLeaks, ironically, is giving us less accountability. It's, forcing, it's causing governments to become more closed and more secret, and it's giving the right to decide what should or should not be a secret to an unaccountable NGO or to the night editors of the Spanish newspaper. They're apples and oranges, Scott. They're completely different things. Governments wage war. They kill people. They employ people WikiLeaks to... WikiLeaks is going to end up no, killing no, no, people with release. No, 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 let me, let, let let me finish material. now. WikiLeaks doesn't wage war. I think different standards of accountability and transparency apply to them. I rather agree no. that they need themselves to be much more transparent. Sir Richard made but this it's argument a different, earlier. But it's a fundamentally different moral order no, than no, no, keeping no, governments Sir Richard made this argument earlier, and ironically, it's an argument you hear in the United States with the National Rifle Association. What you're saying is that WikiLeaks doesn't kill people. It's people like Manning or the information that's killing people. But in fact, just like NRA says, it's not guns that kill people, it's people that kill people. WikiLeaks is a weapon. It's also the cause of the damage that's being done. Just for the Scott. record, we have no evidence that anybody has been killed as a result of a WikiLeaks but you know what, disclosure. The, the people we? that are going to be harmed and that are going to die of this, we're never going to read about it. It's not going to be in WikiLeaks. The Guardian's not going to write about it. It's going to happen in a little village in Sudan. It's going to happen in, in somewhere in North Korea. I think, I think the press is all over this, particularly in the US, and quite rightly. I mean, the people are looking for these examples where it can be proven that WikiLeaks has caused harm, but we do know that governments have caused harm. Okay, I'm going to move on to a final question. Gentleman in the third row. Yes, you, please. Um, I'm Dawood Al Anwari. Um, my question is to Mr. Carl Ford and Scott Gillimore. If you found out that 9 11 and the economic crisis and the whole big event that happened in this world, was done by the U.S. government, and WikiLeaks showed you that, would you still be against WikiLeaks? Yes. We would be for would whistleblowing. Would you live in a lie? We would be for, for whistleblowing. For whistleblowing, but, but against WikiLeaks. Yeah. I, I, would the, you rather live in a lie instead of knowing the truth? Of course not. I mean, the idea that, that, that governments can't keep anything private is an assumption that I don't think any, any government in the world except is practical. It would be great if every citizen in the United States knew everything that everybody else knew. But most of us recognize that we couldn't get anything done. We couldn't make our government function if everybody was putting their two cents first. But that's a pretty well, big anything, isn't it, that he's talking about? It's, people died from this, and you said, like, you don't want to know the truth? Well, but I knew the truth about Iraq. I think that we told the truth as we believed it at the time to the American people. Now, there are other people that don't, don't think that, or the you, other governments may have done differently. One side of but the we, story. Weren't tr we weren't making up stuff to convince people to go to war. The now, fact is that our bad work pr made that point. But it wasn't, it wasn't done on purpose. It wasn't done because we were trying to fool the American people. Did you saw the video that had been uploaded by WikiLeaks, the, like the video that happened in Iraq? We still say you don't want to know the truth? Listen, I'll take your hypothetical a step further. If the release of WikiLeaks documents... That wasn't hypothetical. He was talking about the helicopter. Well, no, but his original question was, was a hypothetical. specific 2007 yeah. incident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, but there, there are big events that happen in this world, and you only know one side of the story. Absolutely, and, still and just what this side live is away. arguing is that we need more accountability, we need more transparency, we need whistleblowing. But WikiLeaks is not the tool to do that. It is a weapon <laughs> of, of mass destruction in its own. It is damaging it's not, it's the democratic system and the diplomatic system at the cost of, of a great deal. So Richard Dalton, you're shaking your head there. Well, because I haven't succeeded in persuading them that actually, according to the State Department, the system is going to continue more or less as it was in protecting United States interests. 
Well, this, that was one statement by the State Department and one statement by the, the Defense Secretary, who frankly are going to want to try to limit the expectations and, and reduce the expectation of damage uh, considerably. But in my personal conversations with acting diplomats, both British and American right now, um, they are quite frank about saying it has hurt them and it has damaged them. Okay, we are, I'm sorry, you wanted to make one further point. I just want to say last thing, like, I would rather live in a life or a world that will tell me the truth instead of just closing my eyes and just believing the people, what people tell me. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> Okay, in the, in the little time we have left, in the little time we have left, I'm going to ask each of you just for a very, very brief 10-second summary. Sir Richard Dalton. It's in the interest of all of us of citizens to know more about what is done in our names. So please support this motion. Carl Ross. I think this is ultimately a battle between truth and control, and I think the crisis that we find ourselves, particularly here in the Middle East, but also globally, demands that we take back the truth. Scott Gilman. This isn't a debate about Iraq, and we all agree we need more openness and transparency, but you should oppose this motion because WikiLeaks is not the road to give us that transparency. Carl Ford, very brief. Uh, I think that all of us should be for transparency uh, and that we should hold our governments to account to tell us the truth. Uh, but WikiLeaks has harmed that process rather than helped it. American people are gonna know less after this than they would have if WikiLeaks hadn't done its thing. Okay, thank you. We are now at the point where we're going to vote on the motion that this House believes the world is better off with WikiLeaks. Let me just explain to you before you do vote. If you want to vote for the motion, that is the side represented by those on my right, you press button one, the yes button. If you want to vote against the motion, the side represented by those on my left, it's button two, the no button. Whichever button you do want to press, please do it now. All right, there's the result. 74% for the motion, 26% against. The motion has been resoundingly carried. All that remains for me to do is to thank our distinguished speakers. Thank you very much indeed for coming here tonight. Thank you to you, the audience, for your questions. The Doha Debates will be back again in a few weeks' time. Till then, from all of us, have a safe journey home. Good night. Thank you. Good night.